Uh, welcome back to Sabro. I'm, I'm your host, Jamie Wolf, with my permanent guest, Luka Zelnick. Resident guest host and third mic, Luka Zelnick. And, and then today's second mic. mic and guest, Jordan Jensen. Jordan. Very talented, funny stand up comedian. Very funny stand up comedian. We're going to start this episode off with our new tradition. We were recently accused of being right wing, which uh, we aren't. Which we're not, and we're going to prove it right now. So uh, play the clip, Lucas. Hold on. Sorry. No, okay. Travel the United States has long been the safest in the world. So safe you never think about it. When was the last time a big jet crashed in this country? What, October 2001? Probably not. Ago. <laughs> but like Unlikely. so much else, that began to change immediately after Joe Biden became president. No, it didn't. Biden imposed the principle of <laughs> equity on the airlines. And that meant it's dramatically low Airlines are not woke or crashing. Are you saying that black pilots crashed his planes? went along with it. Result? There have been several near disasters in aviation. Near disasters. Recently. That doesn't mean who cares. That doesn't change. matter. Last Wednesday, for example, a United flight was coming in for a landing You're at the Continental Airport in Houston. The aircraft was low enough that passengers could clearly see the runway. Right before landing, a plane on the ground taxied out into the path of the United flight. The pilot aborted the landing so dramatically that people on board were terrified. It was another Who near cares? miss People at an American scared. airport. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a good dodge to me. <laughs> Who gives a shit? Yeah. Okay, thank God a the black, guy was black. A black pilot was athletic enough to miss <laughs> yeah. an airline. Thank yeah. fuck. That sounds awesome. For the airlines for many years. The following account was written in December by a very All right, well, I think that's, that's good, yeah. That's what is his argument that... that that, I, that, that aviation has gotten worse since the Biden administration? Yes, yeah. because of equity, because yeah, of diversity and them hiring black, black and, and women oh, pilots. Oh, these pilots are do- yeah, dodging these trans women. Pilots like they, keep, yeah, totally. It's affirmative these action. trans <laughs> pilots. <laughs> yeah. pilots. I'm sick of trans airline pilots. I'll, I'll say it. I, I mean, it's a brave stance trans to take. Trans Am, more like Trans Am. <laughs> 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 Couldn't agree more, Tucker. Honestly, yeah, it's a great point. Well put. I love lines are too woke. <laughs> the woke mob has taken over. I agree. Yeah. With, I do agree that you shouldn't. We shouldn't diversify the airlines just because of just because of whatever it's called, lack of diversity. Yeah. You know what I mean? If white pilots are better at flying, please let them fly. It sounds like uh, <laughs> th- fly. it sounds like a black fly. pilot avoided a crash, and Tucker somehow found a way to get mad about that. Also, though. It I doesn't even sound like they're like worse. It sounds like it he like a basketball. Yeah, player. it sounds like both of the pilots were white men because <laughs> he black. didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I was keeping I, up. I, I, I was think, there okay, with okay. you. I don't think Tucker. He didn't mention the race or the gender of either pilot, which means they were both white men. Right. First so, of all, every pilot I still see is a guy from the Midwest with a perfect hairline who's sixty-five. Yeah, yeah sixty-five, yeah. right 65 on the money. And, and, and gray hair that is thicker than a teenager's hair. But when you see him from behind, there's that little circle of no hair in the back. I like the I like the airline pilot who at the end hands out the little wing pins to the kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then he's in New York and he forgets, so the kids are like, Nah, bitch, I don't need that. I don't need more <laughs> junk in my house. Okay. <laughs> Even the kids are like all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have. I don't want to be a pilot. So I, <laughs> I don't think I need this. I'd yeah. rather watch a beheading video. Today. I play Call of Duty. You're a fucking <laughs> loser, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wait. You actually got one of those airline pins recently. Yeah. I was helping. Uh, I helped two women with their bags, and the flight attendant sarcastically gave me a pin for helping <laughs> out. She said, "Thank you so much. Thank you for helping out." And then another woman was like trying to get her bag up like two rows ahead. But there were people, so I, I couldn't help. And she was like, come on, help out. Let's go. Oh, I what are you doing? I feel like I would be like her. I actually feel like I'm yeah. seeing an attractive tall man helping women out. I'd be like, oh, good job. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, who's no, the no, hero? No, huh? it's funny. It was that's definitely amazing. Funny. Here's and your pin. Get, halfway through, she gave me a pin. Yeah, flight. that's great. She's like, you earned this one. Oh, I yes. Like, and I love actually this bitch. Pin. It's right over yeah, there. You do she have rules. That candle. Yeah, it's that's on the great. candle. Yeah, she Good was fucking job. handing it to me. She was walloping me. But that's why we need like white male flight attendants because a white male <laughs> flight attendant wouldn't do that to me. He'd, ma- he'd make me feel big. Gay, and they are awful. They are horrible. Oh, they're so bitchy. They're so... <laughs> Conti, you know, here's my problem. They're like, we're gonna come through and collect trash, and they sprint from the back of the plane to the front, carrying a trash bag. I know. And then at the end, you have all this trash, and they look, and you're like, yeah, dude, I would have given it to you <laughs> yeah. if you had fucking slowed your roll for. How about two- look? 
Look, I'm, I'm, it's not my I'm job to... I'm holding it over a Hasidic Jew's head who's a fucking... Like, I'm dripping on this guy. He's trying to pray. I'm just leaking onto You're his dripping. book. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get it He's to the He's shaking back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awful. <laughs> You're leaking gelatin on him, which contains pig hooves. <laughs> yeah, why do I have it? Like I don't that. know. It I hits his it skin me. and burns. Here's my problem on planes is I fall asleep immediately. So by the time I wake up, it's a flight attendant tapping me frustratingly. So I, I'm sure the gay male flight attendants do like a sir, sir. Yeah. Sir, yeah. but I, yeah, yeah. I only wake up for that. Sir. Yes. And <laughs> right. So you, always, geez, so you man. think of them as bitchy. Because yeah, immediately. I tried the other day. I had head down on the thing and I tried resisting when she said, can you put your tray table up? I just stayed down. <laughs> <laughs> And she goes, ma'am, ma'am, and she get, does ma'am, and she starts tapping like this, and by the end of it, she is jocking a bitch. I mean, she is, like, moving, and I just, like, I just wanted to see what would happen if I just, just kept, and she just was rocking my shit and smacking me. It was crazy. It was unreal. Until she had lifted me so far up that I had to be like, all right, and I put it back up. It was crazy. Ma'am, I, I like, see your eyes are open. It was You're unreal. watching a movie on the tray table. Yes. You're <laughs> laughing you're uh, clearly you're laughing, laughing. <laughs> very hard it was no i just wanted to see and it was yeah i thought she would tap a few times and then be like all right if you get impaled you get impaled but no they ca- they will wow. not it's they a will thankless not task you. well so many people yeah. sleep on planes their half of their job is waking people up yeah. to tell them something that they don't want to hear that they I don't d- need to hear no let us it do- it, it, there's no let us die if there's a crash well, can't we just sign one waiver one yeah. time one that says waiver. Yeah. we do what we want on the plane and if we die we die and we won't sue you because yeah. i would sign that waiver immediately and then have a my laptop percent. i i hate the faa with all their rules about yeah. you have to listen to the flight attendants you have to and employ you have to do trans pilots can't Look, we just if the have plane no is trans crashing pilots? if the plane is crashing i don't give a shit who the pilot is I want my tray table down. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, totally. I want to yeah. enjoy my last seconds editing yes. my podcast. Yes. yes. And if <laughs> totally. the plane is crashing, I want to make sure that it's a white man who's crashing it because trans people are beautiful and we need as many of them as we can get. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I always try and have a little Also, bit it's a horrible effect. job. You don't want that job. It's like they want it's that like job. being a comedian without the comedy. Well, and You're just why traveling are we talking about from wokeness in the place. airline? It's not even. I saw the other day the pi- the one pilot comes and then all the women have the like little hats and stuff. What is going on in those conventions? You've seen those? What do you mean? It's like one. It's like a Jews? male pilot. No, 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 no. <laughs> male pilot carrying like a briefcase and then a hundred women like can catch me if you can. Oh, but exactly the like same in now those 1940s in twenty. Yes, no, but it's what? happening now. It happens really? now all the time. I see it all the time. Wow. I cl- I go to a hotel. There's a pilot with a briefcase oh, and then and the 10 wim- women yes i have uh, seen that. with perfect hair little yeah, caps yeah. and they're like ah, and yes. he's flirting with them and they all have red lipstick yeah what is going on yeah, yeah. is that a movie or is that what's happening i, I don't know no I, clue. i've i've seen that a lot when i used to live in midtown because uh the uae's flight like oh, they all yeah. stayed at the marriott in midtown for mm. the uae's what is it called emirates 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 yeah. so they all have like a very specific setup and the garb yes. and then they all like wait for the captain and he he literally he would come out and he'd leave his luggage on the sidewalk and they'd just roll it two feet and put it into the the, the yeah, car what what is going well, on well i think that? america I, had like one lawsuit where like the flight attendants were too hot and now the flight attendants can look like whatever we're too hot yeah like because oh. it used to be but the foreign airlines they don't give a fuck like the flight attendants have to be hot yeah. French Airlines, British oh, Airways, yeah. like that rule. they're yeah. hot. Oh, that's what I was seeing. Yeah. Yes, I was seeing a different country. Yeah, yeah. Oh. that's what I think you were seeing. It's not because they have to be hot, sure. but in America. America they can be whatever as yeah. long as they can. Where fit. were we? It was Boston. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they're not the perfect weight, but more. Yeah, they're not. There's very few fat ones. A I saw, lar- yeah, larger dude, number on I'm the scale. Flying to Vegas, I lost my mind. I get onto the plane, <laughs> and there's. There is, we're all going to Skankfest, and Joe List texts me. He goes, I'm in the weirdest seat you could imagine. And I was like, I can't imagine what that possibly is. <laughs> and I walk under the plane. The plane, there's full rows, right? But there's one seat right here as everybody enters, and it is Joe List just sitting cross, just sitting I crotch level, okay, just basically <laughs> greeting everybody as they walk on. And then I look, and for the whole flight, he's standing four inches away from, like, the 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 camel toe of this obese flight attendant the whole plane ride <laughs> because he's right in that weird seat. I yeah. could We just want to make it clear. We don't say words like obese. We say things like... Big fat fatty. A, b- mm. a, 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 a well, hog, slap hog. The, 
on the Tub best Scout? highest weight. Oh. The, the number one most beautiful weight. Yeah. A oh. weight on the scale so large it's great. The singularly amazing weight. Okay. okay which is okay. the highest. You weight. just won okay. the race to type two diabetes. <laughs> nice. We <Wait>. don't say. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Congratulations. You ran so fast. You got type two diabetes <laughs> in the race to type two. Yes. You did. The yes. most beautiful weight. You got there. Congrats. Yeah. You got to type. You got from type one. <laughs> You ran away from type one. Good job. Got all the way to all type the way. Two. You got so far around from type one that now you're at type that you're two. You're number two. Good job. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Good I used job. to have type two diabetes. How do you feel about that? Really? What? I was a big fat fatty. What? Were you a fatty? I mean, not, I was like, or a beautiful? Sorry, you were more beautiful. I was a big in the fat past? fatty. Was you're one of the gorgeous. <laughs> I am <laughs> one of the few that proud I was. the gorgeous. Wait, wait. What happened? Are you? Were you eating a lot? Yeah. What? <laughs> Wait, nope. what kind of a- nope. <laughs> well, I don't know. I was just looking out the window one day and I said, God grant me the goddamn gift of being sweaty all over 100% of the time. <laughs> Wait, like what Wait. age though? Uh, 11, 10. Oh. And you had type oh. 2 at 11? I had type 2 by like 13. Wait, but that doesn't go away, does it? Yeah. If, if you, you type stop two goes goes away. type 2, type 2 goes if away. If you stop eating completely and lose enough weight. You gotta wow. Type quick. one is not. Does that like? Are you like? Do you think in those terms of being like a big fat fatty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, yeah. Shirt, whoa, no, no. Or a, a big, perfect, shirts, amazing. Shirts on all the time during sex. Yeah, Re- yep, totally, really, uh huh. Yeah, I, I had plastic oh. surgery, cut skin off, got a big scar. I can't tell if you're fucking with us. I'm not. I'm oh, okay. wow. I promise. You I mean shirt know. off still now to this day? Shirt on. Shirt on. Shirt on. Pooh bear. Wow. You're fucking Pooh bear if you're fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're unless sometimes if they're cool <coughs> if i don't respect them then i'm like all right we can go crazy but if i like the is person, that the same as cool i love how you just swap wait what? i don't know cool means cool. you don't respect them <laughs> you know how they're cool and i don't give a fuck about a what buddy they think. and you're like it's fine we're hippies we're having sex but then sometimes you're fucking somebody you're like and you're like we're gonna poo bear it oh like you're like i want to be with this person because it's so higher yeah, stakes yeah, you yeah. mean higher stakes you got yeah, you gotta yeah. nail it but don't you think that creates a dynamic where the more you want to keep the shirt on the worse sex it is no no the better sex if the shirt's on i can just be not insecure so yeah I can, you're so not you thinking freak about out. it yeah. so you can be what freak. about lights I, off do you ever do lights off with the shirt off i am i'm an eye contact person uh, really yeah. oh, okay during the whole time not the whole time not, <laughs> not when not when they're behind me i'm not like look at me but yeah i am an eye, or i have to see if i'm you know if it's dark i can't i don't know what's going on if i don't like the person then it can be lights off but then what are we doing i might as well just be home well, okay, lights off. I never got lights off. I'm like, I need to see to yeah, same. perform. But I don't want bright yeah. lights either. I want like Nobody dim wants lights. Bright lights. Dim lights. Yeah. Yeah. Mood you lighting. want like a Mood candle. Lighting. You yes, want a yes. candle or like a lamp. A candle. Mm. I don't yeah. want a candle. I'd hate a me candle. and my I've girlfriend have sex with a candle. It's so romantic. <laughs> <laughs> I rarely get hard, but it's so romantic. <laughs> That's so scary that you light a candle and then she just knows it's time. That no, she me. does it. Oh, okay, okay. She lights it. No. No. This is you're making all this up. No, I light the candle. But it's to set a mood. I don't, as you said, we don't want it to be super bright. And our windows are always open. Then there's Hasidic Jews in our neighborhood just watching. Oh, yeah. So you have to close the curtains. And then you don't want to show bright, something. Someone, you turn something the light off. Never and you, seen before. Just no, get a lamp with a dimmer. Yeah, we have a lamp, but it's too bright. Why? Have All right. Fire well, then get like the a room. sea salt. Get like a sea salt candle. The l- lighting a candle is it's so a, wait, weird. Wait, a sea salt candle? What do you mean? Those little salt candles that are very dim, but they're like mood lighting for. You were on my side, and somehow it switched to you were against me. Putting the neither of us are on well, your side. Well, here's what Jeremy. happened. You're I imagine you're not on my side. I obviously, your but you just body. fuck. You do four pumps, and then you're good. I like, oh, like to set a, a move, a oh. mood, and I like to I do it. I rarely well. get to pump number four, but I appreciate <laughs> that. I am. A Wait, we have a premature end of ED. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. tough. This is this is this. If well, I'm sure, I do. if I could get erections, I'd be conservative, but I can't, so I'm a big liberal. Here's what What's I do. What's up with your erection problem? You on Prozac? Um, I'm on Zoloft, but no, it predates that by many years. It really? It's so it's mental. Six years, yeah, seven years. Well, huh. it started with addiction. You were addicted to drugs. I did a lot of Oxycontin. Uh, I couldn't get hard because <laughs> Oxy doesn't let you get hard. And that yeah. was like for years. So I think I got I'm, in my brain, I got used to not being hard. And then I got really anxious when I got off Oxy. So whenever I fucked, it would be I would be in my head too much. And then I wouldn't get hard. And then it just beca- it spirals because once it happens like a couple times, yeah. you're really thinking about it, and that's when you can't get hard. As and for me, premature ejaculation is also a mental thing. Yeah, I go into sex. Oh, really? Like, yeah, oh. I go into sex and I'm nervous. I'm like, I'm gonna come too fast, and then it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy oh. where it's in my head. But I will say two things about that. The first is, I'll just as long as I put on a condom, which is what I try to do, 
that extends it. And then I'll also just keep fucking them after I come. I can just stay hard after How I come. How old are you guys? I'm 27. Oh, 26. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll work it out. That's Why? How old are you? 31. Okay. So you're but saying these I, next four years are the years where we work well, out our sexual it's gonna get, well, You're going to be hard and you're going to last forever. <laughs> the premature ejaculation happened all the time with guys when I was 26 because they just, yeah, I mean, you, you got... I, I just go down on them for a while first and usually that quells the need to be fucked But that'll chill. I think that'll stop once you're with somebody long enough where you get comfortable. You get a little bored of them. I was then. in a four-year relationship. Boy, did I come fast wow, every single time. Wow. But she had a good one. Good what? Pussy. It was a good one. I've also fucked girls with... I fucked one girl with a pussy so loose that I faked an orgasm. I'm not even kidding. Oh, so you didn't come no. with that one. So you just yeah. need somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I just need a pussy that's not too good. You need like... Yeah, yeah you need a Goldilocks pussy. But eventually the good pussy after like eight years will become less good. You know what I mean? It, not the inside of it. The the you person d- became less attractive, but the pussy every time I got in there, I was like, this still feels... <laughs> yeah, but she was 22 or whatever. Shh, 26 was when we broke up. Right, but so 22 to 26. Those are good pussy it, years. Once you're in your 30s, they loosen up a little bit. You'll have a great time. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, and when I'm in my 30s, I'll be out. fucking You're just all nervous year-olds. and jerky. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's been better since I got on a med vacation. I tried Zoloft the other day. I'm trying I'm trying to get off Adderall. The other I day? Adderall. I think it's a more consistent. Yeah, I'm always fucking around <laughs> with drugs. I have every drug imaginable. Right now, I'm on Wellbutrin. Nice. Which I'm one is to that? Get, that's the one that's... So serotonin reuptake inhibitor is like Zoloft, yes. Prozac, yeah. Luvox, whatever. And then now I'm on a dopamine reuptake inhibitor so, okay. be, so that I can get off Adderall because I think Adderall's the devil. Well, yeah, it's just meth. It's also just the crash from it is the same crash as crashing from cocaine. You want to die right. so yeah. bad. And right. then the only way to deal with that crash, if you're like me, if you have the up and downs, is to then take a downer to go to sleep. So then you're just in so you're just speedballing yeah. every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what's what? Are you an everyday on Adderall type of gal? Oh, I was taking Sounds Prozac like Adderall. It. Prozac Adderall. Okay. But are you yeah. not taking Adderall right now? Mm-mm, not taking Adderall right now. Okay. So how are you feeling? Fine. Oh yeah, I go how days long has it without been? it. Oh, okay. okay. But like <laughs> mostly, it's every day. Yeah. Okay. I know what it's like to not take it, but how long does it take to for the withdrawal to kick in? Because when I was on Oxy, it would just be hours. Yeah, but what that's very that's fast. that's opiate. Withdrawal. You mean the crash? You no, know, like what, when, once you stop taking, yeah, I guess the crash. But when you stop taking it, it's how like, many days until you start feeling like withdrawal and feeling like nervous, anxious, twitchy, and like you need more? If you take Adderall at, say, you take it at ten a.m. by two, you're like, I want more. Crashing, and you're like, everything sucks. And then you take another one, you're like, oh, I'm fine, I'm totally good. And then at night, you're like, oh, everything sucks. And they're like, I'll just take it down or to get through. Fuck. This. Yeah, it's bad. Oh my it's god. It's a very bad. But then if you go a yeah. couple days off of it, you want sex. it back or no? A couple. Uh, like, always. Like right now, do you want Adderall? No, because the Wellbutrin is the dopamine, so it's giving. Oh, you know, okay. nice. It's giving me. So as long as you're medicated on something, you'll be totally healthy. If I'm if I'm in the depression session, totally. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's Which sort of the sure. issue with any drug is once you start doing it and it starts, y- you start needing it. You kind of need drugs from that point on until you die. Yeah. There's totally. some drug because like I did a lot of oxy and then my brain got used to that and I need something now. Like non medicated me, it t- I can't this really. This is function. so not me. I don't have this problem. I at don't all. think I'll need it. Forever. But you've never done drugs like that. You've never been reliant on drugs. No, I've never been reliant yeah. on drugs. I yeah. I think if I get off Adderall which I've been on for years, and then have the Wellbutrin and then keep doing the running thing. I think I can get off Wellbutrin. But I do think that cold turkeying, I tried doing that the other day, and it was just like, oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, Well, that's no, also no. bad if you're on, like, SSRIs or anything yes. similar. It's really bad for you to do that. Any drug you're addicted to, if you go cold turkey, you're going to go fucking insane. Even yeah. even weed, because, like, I know people that were addicted to weed, obviously, and they, they like, couldn't. They smoked f- every day for like six years, and then they stopped, and they couldn't sleep for like three weeks. Those you dreams know? are the best, though. When you yeah, when you're like yeah. really, like quit, re- yeah. Oh yeah. God. Right away, the dreams are insane. Oh you start God. dreaming like really hard. Yeah. yeah. But I think yeah. Adderall. I mean, it's having a shortage. I think because so many. Yeah. I don't know what the shortage is. If that's like people are running out, or because if if, if there's like a ingredient that's missing or something, or if so many people are taking it, but all my friends are on it. And you, I'm just watching them slowly deteriorate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And they're like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this like low point is that I'm getting. And then the next day I see them like manic and they're walking two feet ahead of me. And I'm like, why don't you just take two steps <laughs> and walk next to me? And then I'm like, 
I think this shit might be bad. I think it might be really bad. <laughs> I think so. So we're just a country of tweakers. We really are. Totally. Yeah. Every I took Adderall in high school. Something. There was the kind of like Jewish. You upper took east. it in high school. Yeah, there was That's the Jewish so Upper crazy. East Side, uh, like like regimen that kids were put on to get good scores on the SATs. Okay. Yeah. So it was like rich tutor, uh, every day, Adderall for every test. Uh, and then uh, a big donation from your dad. And that's how you get it. Nice. <laughs> so that's kind of the, and then the, the holy trio. Yeah, yeah th- they gave me Ritalin at like 11. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You get started early. Yeah. I, luckily, I just never really. What was that to it was lose the weight? Dose. No, because no. I, I was a maniac. So Were you still eating like crazy on Ritalin? No, that's impossible. No, Ritalin, they gave it to me, and then they were like, nope, 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 wrong, 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 because I also had crippling OCD. Oh, uh, so that just sped it all yeah, up. Yeah, and they were like, oh, no, now she's just flop sweating, and like her eyes are going like this, so we stopped taking that. But <laughs> I was on shit. so many meds God. that I just was dissociated. And so I you're actually like the most well-adjusted you've ever been now, pre- presumably. You're killing it. For sure. Yeah. Are you still microdosing shrooms? Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I now it's like I feel like I've done it so much that I can tap into the feeling. But yeah, I'm Whoa. That's know. awesome. Wait, you mean you can <laughs> enter the feeling of being on shrooms without being on shrooms? Kind of. Like I, your third eye is open sort of thing? No, like I just <laughs> like I'll take it and I'll be like, Oh yeah, I know how to I know what this feeling is. I know how to like it's I don't know, it's like a zooming out kind of thing or a zooming in, but it is something that's for me. My that sounds amazing. Shrooms, it's just an anxiety type of thing where I go, I'm about to come up, I'm about to come up, and then I never do, and then it's over. Yeah, when you don't do, <laughs> yeah, yeah and if I do, do too to much, I go, trip. I'm coming up, I'm coming up, and then I have a bad trip. Yeah, yeah. These days, no, you don't trip. You just microdosing is like it's almost like you. It just gives you a a well, awareness into the moment that you're in to the point that you're like, oh yeah, I'm no, I forgot that I like. I'm in a place right now with corners and objects and things that I can look at and textures. No. When I start to think that way, oh I'm about God. to have a panic attack. Yeah, me too. When I go <laughs> textures and said. corners, I go whoopsie. When you just panic described time. corners, I got so scared. When Why? I have when I have panic I'm attacks, realizing I'm in a room with objects and corners. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like. I like to being be like. I like to be own. about five feet b- back from where I am at any given moment. I you like to are not five quite feet where back, you even are. Even if you're on mushrooms. No, but I like to not. I like to be in the space of not having two monologues yeah. in my head. So oh. if I start going, that's an object over here, while I'm also, let's say, talking on this podcast, that's when my second monologue enters, and that's when I have a panic attack. Yeah, and that's what was happening to me on stage during longer sets, as I started to have oh. panic attacks on stage because I'd have one voice that was doing the jokes, of course, and then the other voice going, "Wait, I'm talking right now <laughs> to myself, but yeah, also out of my mouth," and I was like, world. "That's fucking insane!" And then I would bug the fuck. That's out. the worst feeling. Yeah. Ever. What's good is if you then just start talking about it on stage yeah yeah that's what's I crazy done that. yeah you well know that's what I mean? yeah You're i like, mean this is what's happening right now this is crazy but what i do is i go into crowd work when that starts happening when i start oh, doing the inner monologue yeah because then i'm like oh right there's a person here hello oh yeah okay i'm a person talking to you and then you get all of a sudden distracted by yes. what they're saying yes as a put and then your inner monologue that always itself. helped me but then I, my inner monologue at the time was like fuck they like came because they thought they were going to see crowd work so i have to show them that i really write jokes and i'm not just a crowd work guy that was all in the second you monologue. don't matter to anybody i know just, you're so right it's yeah it's, just get <laughs> if the monologue that happened to me so many times because i was i forget what was going on i think i had just started headlining yeah exactly yeah, and that's I just what was that's like, when it people started are here for me. to see me what if i just like lay down what 100%. if i just lay down with my face on the ground and my hands at my side for this entire set <laughs> and then you think about it and you're like that then you're just the person who did that for five minutes until <laughs> yeah, the next yeah. black air pilot cla- crashes. Into <laughs> yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Like no, the stewardess, <laughs> ma'am, 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 wake up! You're on the tray table. Yeah, yeah. nobody. I used to freak out about that on planes. I was yeah. like, what if I start, you know, just like attacking people? And then I'm like, they'll put you in handcuffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, they'll it, take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the inner monologue thing. It is no, but crazy. that's exactly when it started for me was when I started headlining and I was like, these people are here to like, I'm the show now. Yeah. I was like, I'm not just a guy doing the show. I, yeah. I am the show, which means if this turns south, the whole show was a bad show. And then I was like, but then who cares if that happened? I know. I know. I, well, I stopped matter. caring. I had this profound, profound bomb at the Chicago Laugh Factory, not even headlining just uh, recently. I bombed in a room. What was it like? 250 ish. Yeah. About 250 people. I'd say 200 black people. 
yeah wow. black room and and black room. and i came on i was killing like two riffs and i was killing and after the riffs i go oopsies they're not gonna like the material but i decided to do it anyway like out of pride yeah and i have this joke about fucking a holocaust denier and i say i'm jewish in it but like i kept saying holocaust and i could see all the black people just being like why is this like white motherfucker <laughs> saying holocaust so much and it just like perf- it just got silenter and silenter yeah. for how long like um i opened with minutes. a minute of killing bombed for about eight oh, okay, and then okay. um yeah it was only a 10 minute set oh but, geez. but who cares then but it, i mean it was just i had never bombed that profoundly when i, I tell you it was ever nothing this profoundly. Yeah, yeah like when i tell you, you saw? i don't think anyone's bombed this profound okay so here's something that happened in the middle just at, like because i also had a meltdown here's something that happened in the middle is someone goes <laughs> are you watching <laughs> yeah, yeah i oh, took boy. i videoed him. someone goes hold the mic further from your face and i go fuck you i'm a professional comedian <laughs> and weirdly but that got, that an, got applause an applause break. break they were all like listening and they were like a really nice crowd him. the way i got off was the weirdest thing i did one more riff it killed out of nowhere and i went after eight minutes of bombing you guys never gave up on me and then, and they, then they gave applause. me another applause break and then i just got off yeah. on that it was the most puzzling thing but in the middle of the bomb like the depths of the darkness i was like why did they applaud you i couldn't figure they it were out. there for him they just I, didn't think he was funny it but was they the supported weirdest thing him. there's that bomb in a white room which is most rooms that i do every room that i do until that one <laughs> show where like they hate me the more i bomb because they're like he's being he's wrong but these black people are just like i don't give a fuck about what he's saying but i don't hate him i mean he's just a <laughs> he's just dirty not little funny. white guy yeah. on stage yeah. saying shit i don't wow. really understand so oh so they were trying to support you but you you just literally history weren't saying things to make them laugh. i could not mm-hmm. could not make them laugh <laughs> even though they didn't hate me it was the weirdest bomb i've yeah. ever had it was yeah. to the point that i wasn't bothered you can i didn't have any bomb yeah. energy when i got off stage no. i was just like i don't even know what happened. <laughs> wow. well it helps to open crushing and close crushing too yeah because oh, then it's like crushing. did yeah, i yeah, did yeah. i bomb the whole but i part? did but yeah. i mean we have video it's confirmed <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah for like i think you should yeah, put, yeah, create brutal. a patreon and post this on your patreon <laughs> five dollar tier <laughs> five dollars we could put yeah okay well if uh listeners of the pod let us know if you'd like to see that video of me i want to see well. the video <laughs> you can $5. see it for sure <laughs> okay we'll be putting it on the patreon for a five dollar it will get ripped and posted though yeah, yeah. ready for that's that. okay By that's me. fine i'm gonna do it <laughs> <laughs> White boy bombs in all black room. <laughs> they like him, but the mostly hate you were him. Talking in the background, so I know it's, it's, the it's video's hard not to hear great, the bomb. But, but you're just nervously being. I like, was talking it's okay. to. I was talking to another comic <laughs> during. The- <laughs> all I could hear, the only thing I heard from your set, because I was talking to him, I could hear there was no laughing. All I could hear was when you went, fuck you, I'm a professional comedian. And then they all applauded. And I was like, I guess he's killing. It's one of those things where uh, if you have to say it. Yeah. One, you're hardly a professional. Why comedian. did they clap at that? <laughs> I can't figure it out. It was one of those. Where were you? Uh, wait, what? Do you, where was the set? Yeah. Chicago Laugh Factory. Okay. It was so, it was one of those things that after I said it, I went, like a hard I'm like a pathetic, them. small guy. Good, <laughs> like, good. Like, that was the first That's thought I had. You, I was like, I'm pathetic. Like, who says that? Yeah. It was the vibe of, remember that guy? There was a viral video of a guy in a bagel shop screaming at everyone. Yeah. He was really short. Yeah. The short. The he actually ended up headlining Adam, comedy clubs. Adam Friedland just interviewed him. Like really? Adam Friedland uh. show, yeah. Oh, That's no, 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 no. Not him, not him. That but there was a really him. short guy yes, that was yes. like, hey, everyone bagel calls ball. me. Yeah, the bagel boss. No, yeah. that's just that's a bagel they, place. No, that's what they called them. Yeah. The bagel boss? Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, he ended up headlining comedy clubs. So maybe he and I are not that different after all. But I was like, I feel like that guy. Like a Karen that karen Like Somebody said, hold the microphone further from your face? Yeah, he was like, I just can't hear you. And I, then I asked so the close crowd. To your face. Well, I had it close, but it was loud. It so gaining. I couldn't tell if it was gaining. No, it wasn't gaining, though. I don't know what was happening. It, it kept ga- it, we it had was just gaining. Been in- they somewhere. know, not you. How would you have any idea? <laughs> they know. If somebody in the audience says, I can't hear you because it's gaining, pull no, the mic. But then, no, 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 I pulled the mic. And then I go, I go, is he right? After I said, fuck you. My first instinct was like, fuck you. Just don't tell That's me where to hold the mic. That's crazy. That, that, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, three that? years. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> if an audience member, I'm, what, eight, nine years in, says, pull the mic, I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there is no point in which I'm like, you're wrong, I'm right. Immediately. I'm like, yes, absolutely. Whatever you say. I don't goes. think any of us are arguing that it was the wrong response. Oh my in God. Situation. I'm a perfect I don't even feel comfortable saying that either. I'm like I'm like, no, no, no. Jordan, I'm, I'm it still was a carpenter. Utterly I'm pathetic. a crowd laborer. It was pathetic. Mm-hmm. It was pathetic on so many fronts. But then I did ask the crowd, I was like, was the mic too close to my face for you guys to hear? 
and everyone was like no because they felt and then i was like got it so i'm just bombing (laughs) no it was worse i was like maybe oh maybe they couldn't understand me yeah and then they're like no no no, we've got every word you're just not funny at all i think you said that on stage you're like oh so you could hear me you're just like we don't like the jokes and that got pure silence they're like that's crazy and then i tried to get the i I tried to get uh, I dr- I tried to do crowd work and there was a guy who's like a pulmonary he was like in uh, um he's the guy that shocks people's hearts when they're dying they're dead okay which actually would have been like a yeah yeah EMT. it would have been a good crowd work moment but they were so off board for anything at that point that there was like the guy who said that well yeah it was this guy i was like what do you do he's like pul- pulmonary and you could have been like well can you shock this crowd and yeah yeah that's what i said yeah. i was like can you bring me back from the dead right now because yeah. this is brutal did that do well no oh wow they were like you might want to post this just <laughs> it might get views <laughs> it might be yeah. good i posted one other bomb that i've had that was terrible and it went very viral on liberal news sites because it was at this banking charity event and i came on they had raised it was a room of 200 and it was all these bankers like all in suits and they announced right before I got on, they were like, we have raised tonight $6,000 for charity. And it was like 200 people, rich, rich people. And I was like, did you say $6,000? And they all applauded. And I was like, fuck off. You guys have done more than $6,000 of Coke in the bathroom during this show. Yeah, that's great. Silence. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Silence. And I proceed to bomb dramatically, dramatically for 20 minutes. 20? 20. Eating it. Just eating cock. Jordan already doesn't think I'm a great comic, and now I'm just telling her <laughs> several comedy. times, several times. As you I have ne- I've seen you maybe do two seconds before you bring me. Up <laughs> I swear to God. Now the only thing you know about my comedy is at least twice have I bombed to the point that is just unfathomable. Well, that it's worthy I'm of a thinking, story. Now I'm thinking that it's crazy that these rich people. Now I'm thinking about the six thousand dollars thing. Well, this and how one I was right. That is. Yeah. 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 No. No. I, that mm-hmm. one. But that rich night are the worst people to perform for. Yeah. The yes. worst. Well, that was an interesting one. Because you think they want to be made fun of, and then you're like, they don't, but they. They do want dirty. Yeah, but you think they don't want that, but that is what they want. But then you call them rich, and that's then oh, you don't like that one. Yeah, it. Soho, pl- Soho, yes, that, House, yes, yeah, yes, those people. Yes. I'm always like, I'm the proletariat. I should be taking care of the plants, and they're it's just bomb. After that, you can't win them over. Yeah, Once you like say, that. That yeah. it's just because they're thinking about themselves. That's all. They're not it's thinking about are, you anymore. It's because they are. Um, yeah, they are emo- they're insecure about the rich thing. Some of them probably aren't rich. Yeah. And are just got a pass to Ludlow House <laughs> yeah. and now they're all preoccupied with thinking that they're rich. You know what I mean? Yes. But and the yeah. other ones feel too seen, which they don't want to feel. They feel yes. like embarrassed about how rich they are. Well, it's interesting because after I did this, calling out all the rich people, the you know the Young Turks is? It's like a very left-wing news site. Yeah. They posted this story on the clip being like, this guy stands up to the rich. Like he's. That's I was great. like, you guys should see my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> oh I was my. like, I am the rich. I don't is exactly. this your apartment? The, yeah, yeah, this is but my But you place. live with your parents? No, 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 no. no. What? <laughs> no, no, no. My parents live. This isn't where your parents live. No, I. You live here. Yeah. You're 26. Yeah. No, he's 27. You're right. He's I'm earned 27. it. I've earned it. He's earned yeah. it. What do you do? Comedy. Besides that, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Other I, than comedy, uh, sometimes podcasting. bomb. Yeah, I'm a podcaster slash comedian. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't your parents' house. This is my parents' house in that they paid for it, but it's not my parents' house in that they live here. <laughs> how did they? How? Ha, ha, how? Okay. They're homeless now. <laughs> Just but kidding. Look at that. They're richer how than before. How much is that chair? Too much. <laughs> you bought that chair. My parents. <laughs> <laughs> but you picked out that chair. My parents. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> your parents furnished? Uh, I furnished some of it, actually, but my mom upholstered that chair, picked the upholstery. She bought it in, it was in her basement. She got it reupholstered, I think. That's Oop. not true. She bought it on auction. I don't know why I would start lying wait, now. It's wait, you're the first guest who didn't know Lucas was really rich. Wait, I you've been in your, the apartment for a while. I knew your parents are rich. I didn't know this was, I didn't know you were, be- I didn't know parents did that. So once I, <laughs> once I like got, um, how can I put it? Once I got enough money from comedy that they were co- they were uh, confident that I could make a living doing comedy for a little bit, mm-hmm. they were they just were like, "We're so proud of you." And then they bought me <laughs> they bought me an apartment. Wow. Yeah. 
Wow. And I would have turned it down, but then I was like, you no can't turn fucking it down. way. Well, why would you turn that down? If you turned yeah. it down, that's worse. Yeah, that's way worse. So it's I, just great. My parents have always given me money, but they're, you know, carpenters. So mm-hmm. it's like, hey, I made $4,000 on this deck. You take a thousand of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? This my dad's kind of a carpenter in the sense that he builds billion dollar businesses. <laughs> what is he? What is so the dad? Sorry. What is the dad? Do again? What is the dad? Uh, he, he just, uh, he's the CEO of a video game company. What does the mom do? Uh, nothing. So the Rich. video games did <laughs> did do well. They do really well. Uh, he he does other things. He's been he's just been like successful for thirty years now. Like he was the. What is their house? You, 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 oh, Jordan. What? What? Oh, what? S- oh, sweetie. You, what is their house? You, you gotta get see lost that place. In it. <laughs> you get lost. Where is it? Upper East Side. Yeah. You get lost in the Upper East Side. There's yeah. no room up there to get lost in. There's this plenty. is as big as it gets. It's a six thousand square foot apartment. <laughs> Wait, how, how? Okay, all right. Is it multiple levels? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and they're just two people. Now, well, how many kids? How many siblings do you have? Two. There were th- five of us total in there. God, no wonder you come quick. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> you never had to learn endurance, boy. No. Oh my no. God, that's crazy. The only reason why my hands have calluses on it is to carry their bags when we all fly privately together. <laughs> This is crazy. What's a rich person's secret? What's the vitamin I should take? Um, <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Already having money is one of the best predictors yeah. of having money. Yeah. That's what I've noticed. No, I mean, you know, what's the formula that they take to, you know, what's the secret? Oh, God, oat milk or almond milk? Which one's? Oat, oat yeah. I would say. I yeah. mean, I don't really know what he does at this point to keep being so. It's just kind of piling up Is he now. happy? Yeah, they're really happy. They are happy? They, they are. love each other? Yeah, they do. How long have they been together? 30-something years. So they met when they were 30? Yeah. And she doesn't do shit? No, she did, but, you what know. What did she do? Like art? She was a uh, she was a reporter at, at ABC. and That's cool. Uh, he was... He he just has been successful for so long. When he was 32, he was the president of 20th Century Fox at 32, which is kind of absurd. Was he in the 30 under 30? 30 under 33? <laughs> you know what I mean? 33 you added three years. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 under 33. 30, 30. 33. <laughs> <I'm repeating. laughs> That's great. I thought yeah. this was their house. Well, everyone on TikTok comments that I'm a Nepo baby, and I'm like, I sort of, I guess, am, but he hasn't can't really be done the anything. La- you for chose me the comedy. last business. I know. I know. It just well, that's help. the thing is, like, I'm a Nepo yeah. baby in that I do my comedy in financial peace, which is kind of a Nepo baby thing because I get to focus on getting better and not worry about. It where doesn't I'm matter in this apartment. You I don't, don't think. I don't think you're a Nepo baby at all. Well, as we're in here. <laughs> How? <laughs> Name one way. No, or no, d'oeuvres. A, a, a butler you'll, you'll, comes by. It, or d'oeuvres. Go song. <laughs> you'll be, you'll you have a way harder battle, in my opinion. Really? Yeah, totally, hundred percent. I can't agree with that and be like. Do you likeable. know how many of my jokes are from working insane jobs and meeting the most insane people yes. and having to stay yeah, alive yeah, yeah. and scrape alive? It's be having nothing to do but comedy is a hindrance. You have to. You have to. You know. You're going to have to force yourself out into the world. Writing to jokes go. about how big your couch is. My couch is so <laughs> big. Yeah. Have you ever gotten lost in a couch? <laughs> yeah, totally. You're going to have to do some shit. You're, you're going to have to eat a lot of drugs or go on some walkabouts or something. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I've written a lot of jokes about being rich that don't do well. Yeah, great. So in good. that regard. Yeah. Are you rich? I'm not rich, but I'm not poor either. So you're rich. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Where do, what do your parents do? My mom is a school teacher. My dad is a house painter. Oh, you're okay. You're not rich. I'm not. You're poor. You said I was rich. I didn't say I was you're, rich. But what is, but that's. You're all poor to me. Those, <laughs> neither of those two. Yeah, we are poor to you. Yeah. People are really no, well, my dad I didn't realize that was a real job. his own painting company. There was like three people on the staff. So like one year he made $100,000, which isn't poor. Yeah, it's poor. So he's that's that's poor for a dad <laughs> to have. I mean, <laughs> to you, for it's the poor. best no, year, to, to most yeah. people, that's poor, but not not to where you where no. The, but he had a weird you had a weird live? situation where your dad also married a or oh not oh married. sorry yeah yeah yeah. So this is this is how I I come from the culture of money without having money myself because my dad did that. My mom was a school teacher who made like thirty thousand dollars every year for life. Yeah, but my dad. My dad's second wife, they were divorced when I was five, and then he got together with this woman when I was 10, and she was a billionaire. Why a billionaire? Her, old just money. They old like owned money. all they the invented, manufacturing. Her family invented factory towns, like <laughs> modern slavery after slavery. Nice. <laughs> wow. But they didn't, 
here was the it was so annoying to us because we're like we we lived with her in like a place like this and nice. And you flew privately. With this amount of Where? money. What? With her, we would fly privately. What city? And then we would like go to my mom's. Philly, right? Oh. <laughs> and then we'd go to my mom's and she's like, we don't have enough money for groceries. So you guys are going to have to eat like like two week old leftovers tonight. It was such a weird dichotomy. Did, of, were like, you upset with the mom or upset with the stepmom? I didn't give a shit. I was on drugs. But oh. but most of <laughs> the time. Five years old? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, when I was like 13 and after. But like. Do you think the 13, do you think the drugs were because of the rich lifestyle? No, well, it was certainly allowed me to get the drugs because I stole from my stepbrother. Because here's the thing: they never gave us money. Like my stepmom never gave us money. They just we just lived in the richest house ever of yeah. all time. So I would just steal from my step siblings who were billionaires. It's like if we lived together and I just would steal from Lucas and he wouldn't even notice because yeah, why don't you he's guys a, live together? Why he's a billionaire. Well, we not you. I'm we saying work my, my stepbrother. We are able to steal from our LLC. So yes, and I still I embezzle from our LLC now. So, yeah. so it's like a we, modern we siphon, version of he that. He siphons money out of our Patreon. Oh, you so you got? Are, do you guys tour together? Yes, we just stopped, time. but yeah. We just finished, or now we're going solo, but we just finished touring together for like, we did 30 So cities. what happened? You bl- blew up <clears throat> all your clips and then you just started doing an hour on the road. How deep are you in? No, I'm six years in. Oh, you're six years in. But How? no, I, I didn't do it. I haven't done an hour. I, we do like 30, 35, sometimes 40. We, on we the do oh. the, our show, the show when we don't have an opener, which is what we ultimately preferred, was we'd come up together, bump mics for 15, do crowd work, and then each do 35. How, how does that go? How does your 35 go? <laughs> it depends on pretty the night. well, but our Good. crowds are all from. OK, so we get a lot of white women who yeah. are also our loyal pod listeners. Thank you, Sarah. Um, but who uh, page mostly have board seen board. me do crowd work on TikTok because I only post crowd work clips. I don't post any of my material because I don't have any time that I don't do. Like, I don't have any. Which stored. one is closing? Him. I close, but he, he only draws way more than me. Draw. You have more of a draw. Way yeah. more. But don't you have like a what's happening? What? I have a big TikTok following. From oh, Crowder but Club. you have the big Instagram following. How yeah. many are you? On Instagram? Yeah. Like 80,000. Anybody? Well, 100 something. Oh, I thought you had a way bigger one than you, but you have bigger on TikTok. I was smaller. I, w- I was only had like 20,000 on Instagram for a while. And then the last couple of weeks, I, it like quadrupled. But What? So wait, you're three years in? Yeah. And you post the crowd work? Blew up on TikTok, so now they just want you to I have like 300 something on TikTok, so not crazy. It's not like a million, but it's. Oh. Uh, it, but I've had a mailing list since the first time I went by. You got you to gotta unhook from him. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What, yeah. what do you mean? You got to. You can't. You can't be opening for a TikTok famous guy. <laughs> you can't be doing it. It doesn't work. You can't do it. <laughs> you got to get out of there. Good thing. Today's the last day of our tour. We yeah. just finished. Yeah. yeah. Oh, We're good. each going solo. But also, I wouldn't say it's. Well, it depends. What do you mean by TikTok famous? What do you mean? That's where your draw is coming from, TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where my draw is. Yeah, from. you yeah. can o- like if you're doing a, if a guy is a TikTok guy. But what are you guy, saying? I'm saying somebody who's six years in. Yeah. Can't go on the road with TikTok guy. I'm against it. Some people do it. People love to no, do it. No, but I'm not a TikTok guy. I'm l- I'm taking comedy seriously. But you're a TikTok guy right now, because you're only posting crowd work, and that's how you got big. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know what you're saying, but I know what you mean. He he has to he has to not open for you constantly. No, he's not opening, but we're co-headlining. Oh, you're co-headlining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You're going second because it's mostly. Your I'm draw. just going second because it's more of my draw. So if he goes second, they think the <laughs> show's over. Well, when you're off, they think the show's over. Yes. So that's why I've been going second, but we're doing the same amount of time. Oh, how yeah. do you know it's mostly your people? You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you Why know. they're all holding like well, they're no, all drinking for, kids. First of all, we have mailing lists. Like we promote <laughs> through our mailing lists. Vials of no, fucking. It's it's clear. It's clear. it's just all white it's women that want to fuck me. It's yeah, not a sustainable yeah. comedy fan base. It's it's young white women. It's twenty three year old white women who are coming to sex mostly sexually harass me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You and you and our Curie. Jeff R. Curie. Oh, he has the same following. It's white young white women for him. <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. Oh, Do really? want to come and fuck him? Oh, oh. my god, yeah. They think he's attractive. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah. Oh, huh. totally. Yeah. I, didn't uh, I that. thought I thought it was like white men that looked like him. Yeah. No. I, that's no, why no, no. I assumed. I didn't know. I think yeah. it's a lot of women and huh. gay men, maybe. Yeah, you got, I, you got gay men. Yeah, you got gay yeah, men. Yeah. 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 But not too many. 
The ones that I get. Well, the one last night was yours, and he won't stop harassing. <laughs> me I get a lot of. From I had Instagram, to restrict I his get account. Like, I get like normal my age, like Schlubby. half men, half women, a little more women, but it's it's more gender balance. And then every once in a while, like a schlubby sixty year old white dude. <laughs> With no explanation. He's like, yeah. I saw you on Instagram. <laughs> I thought you were so funny. I think that's good. Yeah, that's the right. That's about right. Yeah, I get yeah. a lot of the come town people who are like that's little good. incels. And then I get the B&E-N people who have like tattoos. Yeah. yeah. And then but I, that's great. Those sound like good crowds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, our crowd fundamentally doesn't know what they're coming to see. Because I don't really do that much crowd work in the shows. The whole point is I promote with crowd work. I do like three minutes or five minutes in, in a set. But mostly I'm trying to get the material good so that they're not paying for something they're paying for something they that haven't seen they haven't seen before oh, okay okay so i'm using the shows to build time so that i can do they sell out yeah yeah we sell well they, yeah. they sell well from the tiktok crowd work oh yeah, oh, yeah. wow oh, yeah. how many followers on tiktok 300 something thousand not that many so i mean not come, that many in the broad scheme of things they like, they come and they that what they want is to see crowd work like when you move into jokes are they just like what the fuck no, is no, no, no. We got a lot better. The shows were but anywhere from okay to good. They were never terrible or rarely terrible, and they were never awesome. They How were yeah, okay. Yeah. They, were, they were on average pretty bad. So you're doing 30 and you're... Okay, then that's fine. That makes more we're sense. We're splitting but an hour. Doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, fine. He's not co opening. Headlining is great. Me. Okay, good. Yeah, good, yeah, good, I, good he good. goes second, but we're co-headlining. Yeah. At the beginning, I would go second sometimes, yeah. and we realized quickly that they just didn't care that I was there, so I was like, I have to go first. To, wow. Yeah. But yeah, maybe that's why you have to, and you have to go and we bring have to like split. a. Yeah, we have to split. I I need to. We now we you, you the, need to bring a woman. The road also was just very helpful in building that I did not have the time at all, and now like it's not going to be great. The forty five I do, but if I do forty five, I'll be able to say stuff that I'm fine saying, like and do straight material for forty five. So I'm like I'm a, I'm in a place now where I can make it good if with another year of doing it. It's not going to be good right away. Like I lowered my ticket prices for this spring of headlining doing 45 because I'm like, it's going to be kind of rough, but it's close enough. But I wouldn't have this, this past fall, I would literally couldn't have gotten up there. and done Did you guys do a theater? Yeah. Well, we've done a couple, but, but not, they're, not they're theater, small. Not like they're theater like theaters. 200, oh, okay, okay, 300 okay. people. Yeah, yeah. It's just whatever venue we can rent because we did it all ourselves. Like there was no rep that was interested in signing us. So we had to rent a theater in say Philly, we had to go to them, email them, You're like scout rep? the venue. No, no scout the venue. Like no reps are interested in us and I get it. But like we would, we, we would say like, how much is the rate for how many seats? And then we'd work out the best deal. We would ticket it ourselves on Eventbrite, promote to our people on the mailing list and on our stories. And then sell that's how out. we would. Yeah. yeah. And then we'd sell it out, use it by that huh. method. Yeah. We just started getting in at clubs. Like, we just did Zanies. Yeah. We did Chicago Zanies, Chicago. But it was almost, DC all, comedy almost loft. all of this tour was places we rented ourselves. Yeah. D DC what? Comedy Loft and Zany Chicago are the, on are the only two clubs we've done a full weekend at. Yeah. Everywhere else has only given us one nighter, off nighters. And that was just that's like four normal. helium. That's perfectly normal. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 I know. No, that's so we're, that's it's why we rented the places. owners of clubs, they, they'll book, they'll do it if it's like seriously, like the numbers are insane on yeah, TikTok. Yeah. yeah. But they are old school. Totally, so many yeah. of them yeah, are yeah. like, no fucking. We're not way. surprised. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, yeah. Like, we're like, that's what it should be. But then, so we just rented a lot of spaces because that was the best deal. Independent theaters mostly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is so bizarre. What a bizarre. You skipped all, you skipped so much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I believe, I truly believe, and you're going <laughs> to, I don't think you'll agree. I truly believe the way people think about it from the, like, people who are already successful think about it is fully incorrect and it's just because it's the way they did it it's not the best way and it's not the way you have to do it no you don't i mean we even we started a, co a comedy club together yeah when so we started like, sash that yeah. was so so like i just don't believe that the way that people used to go about it is the correct way i just think that's the way they did it because they had to yeah and i'm just like we'll just do it the way we want to the do approach it. we've always taken is maximize stage time and make enough money yes. so that we can do it full time yeah and that's all yeah, no, but the but there is something to be said about the, you know, uh, I mean, the, I agree with you that m the way I did it is so different than the way you did it, but the way I did it is also different than the way, like, Dusty Slay did it or Bargazzi, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it always yeah. is yeah. evolving, and you guys started a club, and you used the internet, and you utilized the tools that you had, whereas I had a truck, so I utilized that and yeah. drove around places and yada yada, and, like... I have lesbian moms. I utilize that on stage. That got me to X, Y. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter what tools you're using. We all are using something. It's just interesting 
that feeling that we were talking about earlier where you stand up and you're like, oh, my God, these people are here for me. Yeah. I can't imagine being three years in. And oh doing that. yeah, you it know was what a, I mean. It was circling a, back to the panic attack. Yeah, it was a it was a total crisis. But I was also like, there were two things I felt like I knew about the TikTok fan base. The first is like, I was like, these people are not long term comedy fans. I'm gonna lose them either way. So I'm either gonna lose them if I do nothing and they forget about me, or if I use this time, get all the stage time I can, deliver an okay show or even a bad show, and lose them that way. I'd rather do that, make the money yeah, while I can, and get the stage exactly. time while I can. Then do nothing out of like paying my dues and being ready yeah. and yeah. then having them disappear anyway. The other thing is like from starting sesh, I will say so many. So I feel like a typical five year comic has really been doing stand up for three years and then mics with nobody there for two years until they started getting booked with sesh from six months in. I got to do full rooms like 14 shows, 14 a week. shows a week persistently. We, we did that. Yeah. That's what we did. Yeah. We did four, we, uh, our, but our mics were 14, at least 14 mics a week. Yeah. We yeah, were, yeah, yeah. Well, I also was miking oh, okay, during that okay, time, okay, okay, yeah. but I'm saying I got that much stage time in front of like a full crowd and that. Yeah. Helped. What's, and then you guys gave Sesh away to that dude. Yeah. But yeah. we still do the show. Oh, we sold it, but yeah. So you bought the room. Mm-hmm. We rented the room oh, okay. and then we extended the lease on the rental so no one could take it from us. And then when a guy came in saying he wanted to take us for take it, we we're like, well, we'll sell it to you. We still do the shows. Yeah. But we still do the shows. Every single spot we do. Yeah. The, and you sold so it to, that, to, to the guy with the captain So we're pre-booked eight spots a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? I love that guy. But he has a captain hat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like him a lot. He's getting better at stand-up. Like, it's fun watching better. him get, get better. Getting better. Yeah, yeah, he is getting better. Um, so you <laughs> sold it to him. So yeah. he pays you every month. He doesn't uh, pay us much. Well, it's a complicated. Thing. Okay, okay. With he the was money, supposed to pay us, and then we put it on pause because honestly, we just want to do the shows more than we yeah. want money. Yeah. Like it's once more he pays us, us, he owns it. He doesn't have to book. Somebody's us. paying for the room. No, yeah. no, no, the, the money yeah, coming in oh, is okay. paying for the room, but like there's enough money to pay us out our whole purchase price. But if he pays us out, he owns it, not us. So right now he owes us money technically, but we own it, which means he has to put us on every show, which means we're pre books eight spots a week because we have a weekly show there and then there's seven spots there. So if we don't reach out to anyone, we have eight spots a week there and then we get spots. So minimum I'm getting, you know, we're both getting 12 yeah. to 14 spots. I try and do like 20 sets a week. Yeah. It's usually my goal. It's so hard for the for the thirty two year old sage, eight years, <laughs> nine years into comedy to not destroy you guys right now. But I will hold to it. Destroy us. Give it uh, to well, us. Well, you just you're just buying a full room. You just bought a full room of yeah. people. Yeah. Like even that guy, you've watched him get slowly better, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it is there is like a level of like there is you guys are gonna have to deal with a, a small amount of uh, the shame that will come up when somebody goes pull the mic. Like if somebody says to me, "Pull the mic," I pull the mic, right? Because yeah, I've been yeah. doing this. I've been getting the shit kicked out of me at mics, at shows, working, cr- crawling, grabbing the ladder, getting pushed back down. Grab- that when somebody says pull the mic, I'm like, "You're right, and I'm wrong." Whereas you get insecure and you go, "It's my show," <laughs> right? And that is from the little bit of shame of paying for stage time having the apartment having the you know what i mean y- so wait we're not paying for stage time you kind of are though you're paying you bought your stage time at sesh oh totally right. yeah but other people buy mics <laughs> other people pay no, to they do buy mics. three dollars they buy three minutes but we made money off sesh what it was like a profit we never business. we never lost money on sesh we made all of our money on sesh no, 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 no. But you're purchasing sta- – you are not – it's not that somebody's like, you two are good at stand-up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do sesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You just bought your way onto stage, so you're getting – which is great. Yeah, 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 It is just – but you guys are going – there is going – you're going to have to reckon with that reality or else you're going to be snotty. Yeah, that's what the road's been. It's been a reckoning. Just okay. not delivering good shows. Yes, I mean, it's yes. been a – yeah, it's been an, yeah. a wake-up call. Yeah. But it's also – it was a kind of like, of course. Yes, good. Like doing good. the longer sets, I'm like, yeah, of course this isn't going well for the whole time. Mm. Of course. Why would I be killing for 30 minutes even when I've only been doing it three years and I, yeah, I just don't have the experience. You, That's always been the knock on me is yeah. that I just skipped the line. Right. And it doesn't right. help that I'm also a snotty rich kid. Yes. In addition to having skipped the line. <laughs> I don't think anyone that skips the line is going to be smiled upon. But every time I meet a comic like you, who's one, really funny, and two, worked for a very long time to be this funny, I'm like, why would you like me? 
well, or wa- or root for my success. So that's been my reckoning. Nobody I, roots for any. I mean, people root for their success. No, but some but people root. He for roots their, for your success. Your friend, your people who know you well root for oh, your I success. Want, no, I don't want. Why did you think I want him to be successful? <laughs> yeah, I know him very well. <laughs> I want him to, to crash and burn. Is you have to write a TV show. This is what you have to do. You have to write it to get somebody, a, a, you know, black and w- write a TV show with them and then have <laughs> all of your friends pilot. on it. So everybody get gets paid pilot. and do a crashing thing where everybody gets paid and then you will be accepted. No. Well, that's the interesting thing. So this is kind of the world we live in. This is the world we live in. Which you is just went. No, <laughs> no, because this is the world we live in, which is no one's interested in signing us in the industry at all. Yeah. And we're making a lot of money. His money will sell the pilot. But. No, it will. We've yes. already done that. You've already yeah. written a thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, write a better thing. And you've said, "Daddy, send this up the ladder." No, no, I don't do stuff like that. Why would I? What do you do mean? That? Tell your daddy to send it up the ladder. Have it out of large. <laughs> Tell your daddy to send it. <laughs> and and hire all your friends, and then no, they'll I'm get not paid out. Finance a TV show with my daddy's money. No, because then why you not? I'm then living you'd have it. money that is rightfully Lucas's. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? <laughs> don't do it to me, but do it to other people, and then you know use your nepotism to get everybody paid. That's what you do. Write a big pilot, huge cast. <laughs> <laughs> like everything everywhere all at once but you know <laughs> everything <laughs> high <laughs> budget huge cast yes. everybody in the new york comedy scene is in it yes everybody makes money everyone loves me mm. <laughs> <laughs> no but i don't i uh, a talk show that is money the is lucas every... zelnick talk show yeah or send this podcast up the ladder and then pay <laughs> people a thousand dollars to come on the episode Send something up the ladder. Just Wait, send what's it the up. ladder in your, your mind? daddy's ladder? He which, doesn't have the ability to. That's not true. Yeah, that's yeah, just that not true. true. No, oh, that's true. If you sure. write a, if what's you, true? He can't sell a TV show for me. There's just no way. He could probably. Here's. Can I offer you an olive plant <laughs> branch? Yeah, sure. He could design a video game and use your likeness, and you could get paid royalties. <laughs> that's not true. He could literally no, just because he's a he video could, game guy. But he could no. just call in to somebody no, he, he knows can. at he ABC. What if we did like wife? a stand-up video game and like <laughs> you play as Jordan Jensen and like you have to make it from open mics all the way to the cellar to starting to headline to like opening they for have big that comics. In AI. You play as Jordan they Jensen, have but that. this time it's you, so you make money and you go on a podcast with. I don't need comics. to make money. I don't want <laughs> to have press money. A to give this advice. is not what I want. <laughs> yeah, you can press a. This is what you. This is what you need to do. I promise you, if you say, Dad, if I write a pilot, could you get it up the ladder no, to no, no, somebody? I can't. I've already jokingly would. done Can we call that. him? Yeah, yeah. Let's get him on the phone. <laughs> he works a lot. Uh-oh. So, Oh, he didn't pick up. <laughs> he <laughs> hung up on you. <laughs> yeah, he didn't even. He screened the call, to, yeah. to be exact. So that's why I can't send it up the ladder, Jordan. Because <laughs> that's usually yeah. how the calls go. Is oh, that your dad? That's my dad. Should let's ask? ask him. Okay. Hi, I have a question for you. I'm on a podcast right now, as you can tell, because there's a mic in my face. You don't have to be on it if you don't want. I can always just cut this. It's not live (laughs) recorded or anything. But we're having a dispute that I wanted you to settle for me. It's about nepotism. And it's about whether your success could... I could... With The phrase that's being used on the podcast is I could like write a TV show and, quote, send it up the ladder by having you tell one of your rich friends who runs things to make the TV show. True or false, Could if I put enough pressure on you, do you think you could do that? No, I'm, I'm, no, no one can do that. Liar. Just like Our guest thinks you're lying. <laughs> to the side, I mean, as you know, I could get you um, auditions and I could twist someone's arm to give you a bit part in something, maybe. Um, but to actually make a broadcast television show, Push this <clears throat> no one's doing that as a favor for anyone else because you know, they have their own businesses to run and jobs to do, and they have to maximize you know, the opportunity the throat. that they run. His throat. That's a um, sign but of sure, you know, could I introduce you to virtually anyone? Yeah, I mean, for you know, could I get you auditions endlessly? Yeah, and people do that for their kids sometimes. And occasionally, if the kids have talent, you know, it does open doors. And you see that in Hollywood. But the door only opens as far as the talent, you know, allows you to. Um, And occasionally you'll see someone through a connection get an opportunity where that they shouldn't have. And that's their last opportunity. It's not like someone hires them again when they're terrible. So is Very well said. Um, You and I have lots to discuss (laughs) offline. But uh, (laughs) thank you.
You said endless auditions, just to quote you. So <laughs> we'll, we'll be, we'll be in part conversation. guaranteed, I believe you said. <laughs> you did could keep clarifying my saying, and if there's talent, and I, and if I, and they have and talent. And I quote, you could twist someone's arm to get me a bit part. So we'll we'll have another conversation. And I just came from this huge conference I'm speaking at, and I gave you a big shout out, too. Oh, really? Okay, well, maybe I'll hear from some people. Uh, Dad, I love you. Thank you very much for Jordan chiming Jensen, in. Jordan Jensen, stop. It's so funny how successful he is. Every time he talks, you can just it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I can, I can it's smell crazy. It on CNN, it's crazy. he's I so wanna, scary to, to hear talk to in mom. real life. He's the scariest guy. He's really scared to argue with because I wrote this bit about him that he didn't want me to do, and we had this conversation about it, like whether I could do this bit. And I was like, look, my view is this is my life, this is my career, and it's my story that w- how you impacted my life. I'm not gonna say the bit because. He won the argument, but (laughs) in the short term, at least. But then he we were arguing and he was like, the argument you're making, it's a specious argument. Yeah. And obviously, I didn't know what that word means because why would I know? But I was in the heat of the argument. So I was like trying to rise to his. I was like, no, it's not a specious argument. Your argument's a specious (laughs) argument. And afterwards, I had to look it up, hoping that specious was like kind of the wrong word. Like it was fancy. Like he was manipulating me with his intellect. Well, it turns out specious means appears correct on the surface but has an underlying flaw that renders it irrelevant and i was like that is the he just learned that he just (laughs) learned it that week he was taking it for a test drive and that's the pod all right guys thanks for tuning in